All right, so in this video, we're gonna look at what I call basic factoring, which is when we have a quadratic, power two, um, and a is one, and we have to separate it, like this down here, into um, two simpler terms multiplied together. After all, that's what factoring is, right? 15 is three times five. This process is called factoring. It's where you break down a big number, like 15, into two smaller things multiplied together. That's what this is doing here. A big polynomial um, in standard form, uh, which is this form right here, where A, B, and C are numbers. Um, we're breaking that big complicated thing down into two simpler linear terms that are multiplied together. So let's take a look at how to do this. And this is not something that you learn in this video and then you know it. You gotta practice um, these things. So a quick example, just to kind of show you um, how it works without going into all of the strategy all at once. Um, the factoring begins by looking at the last term. In this case, it's 28. And you write down all the numbers, uh, the pairs of numbers that can multiply to 28. And that's kind of your uh, word bank. And you use those to help figure out um, what the factored form is going to be. And this is what you're guided by is this minus three. Um, in this case, these numbers are three apart. So if we um, put in those terms, um, we get the answer. So it's it's almost like a, you, some people do factor by just guess and check. So um, that's what it looks like, again, minus all the strategy we're gonna learn today. But I want you to, so, to, to see something. So. FOIL, remember, is a way of multiplying binomials. It's an acronym that we've made for it, and honestly, it might be more memorable for you just to see the little arrows that we use to, um, to multiply. And it's actually how you can check your answer for these, and it's, it's where we get, it's all the guidance. Um, so see what happens, we get, we get x times x, four times x, minus 7x minus 28. And if you haven't already, take a look at my multiplying polynomials video. Um, but but look, and then these combine to minus 3x. That's the same as what we started with. So we must have done it right. Um, but we get a lot of insight here too. Like notice that when we do the L and FOIL for L for last, um, we that's the only place where we get the last number here like that fourth um, distribution. So that's why we're looking at factors of the last number, C, because that's what gets us the fourth term when we multiply like this here. Anyhow, um, and then the middle term stuff is looks like it's determined about how you can add or subtract seven and four to get three, and that's why it worked. Um, so in summary, what are we doing here? What are we doing in this video? We're trying to figure out what we can write here as linear terms um, that'll always start with just x and x since we're doing a is one. Um, trying to fit, basically fill in the blanks and, and, and make a good guess um, that rewrites the polynomial in factored form. Um, so what are the steps? Well, you write out the factor pairs of C, you pick one of them, uh, pick a pair that adds to B and use the rule signs, which we'll talk about, uh, to write binomial factors and, and get your answer. Um, so another example here, um, we, you can always start by writing your two um, binomial terms. So we, we always have X and X. Um, and then once you get there, uh, we're gonna talk about the signs in this problem, when it's plus plus, it's plus plus, um, which is really convenient. Um, doesn't always work like that, but in this case, it is plus plus. So when I write down the factors of eight, um, factor pairs, one and eight and two and four, um, I pick the one that adds to B. Notice that B is nine and C is eight. So. 1 and 8, they, they can add up to 9, so I'm going to pick 1 and 8, and I think that'll work for us, and we can FOIL to check. 
So I've mentioned the rule signs. What is it? Well, I gave you four examples of all the different possibilities that we have when we have the, the signs in our standard form. Either you got plus plus, plus plus, minus plus, plus minus, or minus minus. Um, so we can really break it down into two groups here and here. In this case, C is positive, and this one, C is negative. So when C is negative, it's actually really simple. It's just you pick a plus and you pick a minus. And the reason why that has to happen is because look at that L, remember foil? Look at the L in foil. That's the only arrow, the only distribution that's going to get us this. And the only way you can get a negative number, like on negative 24, is to multiply a positive and a negative number together, right? I always do this to illustrate it, right? Plus times plus is a plus. Plus times a minus is a minus, minus, plus. So if you want to guarantee that you get a negative, like we get this negative 24, the strategy would be to pick a plus sign and a minus sign because that guarantees, that's the only way. Look, it's the only possible way. Plus, minus, minus, plus, or it doesn't matter. That's the only way to get a negative, okay? So that's why we pick this template right here. Um when we get um, C is negative. Now, if C is positive, you got a plus at the end, um, you have two choices. You're either gonna do uh, plus plus, or you're gonna do double negatives. And that's gonna depend on what your middle term is. If this guy's negative, you should pick the negatives. If this guy is, oops, if your B is positive, you should pick positives, okay? so. I like just think of it as three templates. You just gotta pick which one. Um, and this is giving us some guidance on this slide. This is a good slide here. Um, I'll come back to these in a second after we do an example. Um, so notice that there's a, that the A is one right here. Um, so uh, we're gonna use what we just learned. So start with the factor pairs. So we got 40. 40 is one in 40. 2 and 20, 4 and 40, I'm sorry, 4 and 10, and, and 5 and 8. Um, if you're asking, well, how did you get those so quick? Well, I tried to divide it by 1, which always works. Tried to divide it by 2, tried to divide it by 3, which failed. 4 worked, 5 worked. 6 was like, eh, doesn't work. 7 doesn't work. And you can try this in the calculator. Just try 40 divided by 7. If you get a decimal, you don't write it. If you get a whole number, you found a factor pair. Um, but once I get to eight, like I'm not gonna put like eight, five, because then I'd be, it would be a duplicate. So we stop when we start seeing repeats. Um, anyhow, so we just learned that since C is negative, and I encourage you to write that, C is negative, we gotta pick this template. Because that's the only way to guarantee that the L in foil is gonna get us negative 40. Okay. So, which one do we pick? Well, we're going to look and see. So since C is negative, I like to just take a look and see which ones are three apart. So down here at the bottom, I bet I can get three out of five and eight if I have a negative sign like on that C. So look what happens when I put an eight in here and a five in here. If we were to check this out, let's do it in a different color. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. This times this. This times this. Look what happens here in the middle. I get a plus 3x. And that's because 8 and 5 are, are, are 3 apart. So you can use subtraction to get the 3. Okay? Some people like to make their table have a negative here, but when that happens, you have to adjust and, and, and rewrite and do all this stuff because negative one in 40 is different than one in negative 40, right? So I like to try and avoid that. And when C is negative, I look for um, 
I'll just call it a part. And that was actually what's written here. Um, now would be a good time to talk about this, is if C is negative, your choice, your factor pair choice, um, is going to be like absolute value of B apart. Um, in our case, it was there were three apart. If you search for that, it's kind of a good quick strategy to find it. Um, and then you have to pick, um, yeah, your, your largest factor needs to go with the sign that you got. So here we see that the we had a plus here on B. So we wanna make sure that the eight was positive and the five was negative as it is right here because that's gonna guarantee that this is a plus three that wins out. Um, that's all like the nitty gritty of it, but um, it's really hard to <laughs> compile all of this factoring stuff into one video, trust me. Um, but let's do some more practice. So the template here says C is positive. When C is positive, I like it um, because when we make our table, it really is plus 21. Like we're really talking about, um, you know, we don't have any sort of second guessing. Um, I can list my factors and I know that those are going to be, those are going to multiply to positive 21. But what's the template? The rule was um, it was either going to be right. If you go back to the when I showed you the, the the rule of signs, it was either this or this. And because we do have a negative involved, we got to pick the negatives because how else are we going to get negative 10 in the middle if we don't have some negatives flying around? Right. So this doesn't work for us here. Um, but yeah. And then you just have to look for the ones, since C is positive, um, I like to say look for the ones that add to 10. And this one definitely does not add to, it adds to 22. But this one adds to 10, so we know it's going to be 3 and 7, and order doesn't matter because the signs are the same. Um, and this works. You can foil it, and that's the correct answer. Um, and this one, we have C is negative. So when C is negative, the only way to get a negative number for multiplying is plus and minus. So this is our template, and the only numbers we can use are ones that multiply to 6. 1 and 6, 2 and 3. So when you make the choice here, um, it's a little tricky here because I can I could get the number 5 by adding and subtracting with both of the pairs. Right, I, I could subtract these and get a five somehow, or I can add these and get um, five two. So which one is it? Well, C is negative. So those special considerations come into play and I'm gonna pick the ones that are five apart. So, so the difference here for this example, and it's all based on what this sign is, I'm gonna pick one and six. Um, let me show you why. So when C is n negative here, we pick um, ones that are five apart. But when C is positive like this, we pick ones that add to 10. You know? So we can kind of see that when C is negative or positive, kind of, we have to kind of shift our... It's all about signs, right? But... Um, when C is negative, you need to pick um, ones that are B apart. So, um, and it's a negative five that one out. So I gotta pick, put my six there on that um, on that big negative there, and put my one here. And let's double check our result. And you could just try numbers and check them. That's why it's important to be good at, at foiling too. So this would be x squared. This would be minus 6x. This would be plus x. This would be minus 6. And this does combine to minus 5x. So it does uh, check out and it's equal. Um, you don't learn factoring by just looking at these three examples. You need to practice this. Look online. You can find plenty of, um, or if you want practice, you ask me. Um, but um, this is not a, I'll sit down and learn it. Um, but this is the basic strategy here. If you're looking for something to write down and, and look at tomorrow, um, this is the overarching um, way.
that I like to factor quadratics is by listing the factors of C, and then you have to find a factor pair that adds to B. Um, but when C is negative, you can kind of look at it as their difference is B. Um, and then you use the rule signs and use those templates 